Resident Evil 8 Village has quite a few weapons for Ethan to use while battling his way through the many, many monsters in this remote Eastern European region. From the usual suspects like shotguns and rifles, to the more obscure firearms like the rocket pistol, Ethan's arsenal is as diverse as it is deadly. So today I thought it would be fun to count down a list of some of my favorite lycan slang weapons that we get a chance to use in this game. Keep in mind that this is my list, and as such will undoubtedly differ from yours. So feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. All that being said, let's kick this list off with... Is there anything in gaming quite as satisfying as the glorious crack of a headshot? In my opinion, it doesn't get much better. And no weapon brought me more headshots in RE8 than the only sniper rifle in this game, the F2. I've always enjoyed using snipers in Resident Evil games, specifically in the Ganado Valley in RE4. But unfortunately, due to the mostly cramped environments of RE7, we didn't have one in that game. So I was very happy to see it brought back for this one. Snipers are always very powerful weapons, and unlike magnums, you actually get a fair amount of ammo for them, so you actually get to use them outside of boss fights. However, while I certainly used this thing a lot in the campaign, my affinity for it really grew in the game's mercenaries mode. I'm not sure how many of you have played mercenaries in this game, but in that mode, the palette of weapons at your disposal is very small and even smaller as you progress in the levels. In the first four though, you can get the F2, and it's about the only weapon that I used to get my SS or higher ranks. It was these levels that really made me find my love of snipers again, and it was this mode that earned the F2 the number five spot on this list. The Dragoon is probably an unexpected guest on this list. I doubt most people who played this game would even consider it since, during your first playthrough, your only exposure to this weapon would be in Chris Redfield's Assault on the Village. And while I really enjoyed this section of the game, if that was the only time I got to use the Dragoon, it certainly wouldn't have made the cut. Luckily, however, after you've beaten the game, you can purchase this weapon from the Extra Content Shop. And what's more, since you don't acquire it in the base game, it has no upgrades. So you can almost instantly unlock unlimited ammo for it. For me, I don't think I got all the parts for about any of the base game weapons on my first or second playthroughs. So I didn't unlock unlimited ammo for anything except the Dragoon. So when I decided to do Village of Shadows on my third playthrough, the Dragoon became my go-to weapon simply because I didn't have unlimited ammo for anything else, other than I think one of the pistols and one of the shotguns. The Dragoon itself isn't the most special gun in the game, I do like the feel of it and how it sounds. But really, if it wasn't for how easily you can get unlimited ammo for it, I wouldn't have used it all that much. It reloads really slowly comparatively, and takes a lot of bullets to put even a standard lichen down on Village of Shadows difficulty. But having used it so much, I've gotta say I've got a soft spot for it. There are three weapons that really stand out to me in terms of visual design in this game. Those being the M1897 Shotgun, the GM79 Grenade Launcher, and the M1851 Wolfsbane. While every weapon has its own unique look, each of these weapons seems to have gotten some extra care so as to stand out even amongst their peers. And while I enjoy all of these weapons to an extent, for me, the Wolfsbane has to be my favorite. Magnums in Resident Evil games have a pretty storied history, all the way back to Barry's Python in RE1. 
They stand out to me as boss killers. Weapons for which you hoard all of your ammo until you're in a tough spot and need some extra firepower to get the job done. However, what I truly enjoy these guns for isn't necessarily their role in the standard storyline, but rather the sheer devastation you can rain down on enemies once you've unlocked their infinite ammo. I really enjoy using magnums post-game. And while you can unlock the hand cannon once you've beaten hardcore difficulty, or the stake in New Game Plus, it's the Wolf's Bane that stands out to me as this game's premier magnum. Not only is it, of course, powerful, but you find it in an interesting location, Moreau's Laboratory, and it's got easily the most interesting design. So, for all these reasons, it's the Wolf's Bane that earns the third spot on this list. I'll let you in on a little secret. I've been planning this video for quite a while now, over a month, but I had to keep pushing it back because for the life of me, I couldn't acquire this weapon, the LZ Answerer. But now that I have it, I've gotta say, I don't even like it that much. Melee for me has always been regulated to breaking boxes or sheer necessity. So a weapon focused around melee doesn't exactly play to what I enjoy in these games. However, that being said, I love the LZ Answerer for two reasons. Number one, it was difficult to obtain, and number two, I enjoy the reference. It's a trap! I've always liked it when a game pays homage to another game or form of media, and that's pretty obviously exactly what the LZ is doing for one of the most iconic weapons of all time, the lightsaber. Personally, I've never been a big fan of Star Wars, but even I won't deny that the lightsaber is a fantastically fun weapon. But what I like even more than the homage is that this thing was hard for me to get. I miss the days when you could get something interesting for going above and beyond in a game. And Resident Evil 8 does a good job of rewarding you when you've done something that's meant to challenge you. In order to get the LZ, you need to get at least an SS rank in every Mercenaries map. Which, at least for me, was exceptionally difficult. And while I may not love the actual reward, I enjoyed the process of obtaining it. And even if I thought it was a bit underwhelming, the particle effects alone make this thing a joy to at least try out. I don't know that the Lemmy would top many people's list of their favorite guns in this game. It's not exceptionally powerful, it's the first gun that you get in the game, and you'll probably get rid of it halfway through when you get to the M1911. However, as with many of the weapons on this list, I've used this gun so much that it's earned a special place in the inventory of my heart. As has probably become pretty obvious, I've spent a lot of time in the mercenaries mode of this game attempting to get the LZ Answerer. And if you're familiar with that mode, then you'll know that the second set of maps are basically just a showcase of what the Lemmy can really do for you. In the harder Mercenaries maps, the only weapon that you'll get with any real consistent ammo is the Lemmy, meaning that you're going to have to get very familiar with it in order to get any kind of high point total. It's this time spent with the Lemmy that makes it my favorite to take a weapon that's probably one of the weakest in the game and force you into a situation where it's your only ally makes you adjust your playstyle to deal with certain enemies and situations. It's kind of like Dark Souls, I guess, where you have to learn an enemy's movements and weaknesses more so than just packing a stronger punch. With the Lemmy, you have to do those things, and it's fun to strategize for an upcoming bout knowing that you have that limitation. So, for those reasons, the Lemmy takes the number one spots on my list. 
Anyway, those are my picks, what are yours? Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments section down below. This game has a ton of interesting and fun weapons to toy around with, and there are certainly some that just missed the cut, like the M1897 shotgun and the rocket pistol. Resident Evil games almost always have a great selection of weapons, and this one was no exception. But anyway, thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you all in the next one.